Hey everybody, Motorboat59 here, talking about something that uh, I know a lot of people aren't probably interested in, but I am interested in it. This is my channel, so I'll talk about it if I want to. And uh, that is motocross, supercross, and the motocross to nations, and where all that has headed over the last 15 years. Motocross was what everything started with. Outdoor motocross, uh, people racing outdoors on rough tracks and when I started paying attention to motocross around 1972, it was a very unrefined sport, especially in America. It was already pretty popular and pretty big in Europe, and they would bring the Europeans over here. They did that. A man named Edison Dye recruited some of the uh, Europeans to come over, and he was the importer of Husqvarna motorcycles back then. And uh, he invited them over to try to popularize a sport and get people to see how cool it was to watch these guys race and they would just come over here and wax the Americans and uh, at that time the, I was watching an interview with one of the old European GP stars and back in the 70s when they were, would come over for the Trans Am, the Inter Am series the uh, Europeans had a deal where if you got beat by an American you had to buy all the beer that night after the race it was, then the Americans couldn't compete with them. Uh, we started having the Carlsbad USGP in 1971, and an American didn't win it until 1980 when Marty Motes won it. He was a privateer, but no Americans. It took us that long to really... We started catching them, and guys like Brad Lackey were winning Grand Prix every once in a while, and Jim Pomeroy, but... Uh, Brad was really the only American contesting the world championship circuit for 10 years. And, uh, but eventually the Americans started catching up with them. And in the eighties, we surpassed the Europeans and we started spanking everybody. Uh, the motocross donation is kind of like the Olympics of motocross. And we didn't even send a team in 1978, 79. We just, it wasn't worth it. But in uh, 1981, when uh, the United States essentially sent Team Honda over there, all the riders were Honda guys, that was uh, Danny Laporte, uh, Donnie Hansen, Johnny O'Mara, and Chuck Sun. And they were considered a B team. They were not the best riders in America at the time. They weren't considered to be anyway. But uh, they sent them over there. And uh, but we kicked their ass and we won. And we won for the next 13 years and nobody could beat the Americans. They would go over to the one-off races at Bercy in Paris and the races in Australia and all these other different uh, places in Spain and all that, and they would just kick ass. And the European crowds came to love the Americans. Uh, Brad Lackey won his world championship in the 500 class finally in 1982, the same year Danny Laporte won uh, the, was the, Brad was the first American to win because he clinched his championship the week before Danny Laporte clinched his championship in the 250 World Championship GPs. Uh, but we were the kings. We were the undisputed kings of the world in motocross. And then Supercross came along. Don't get me wrong, I love Supercross. I go to at least one Supercross race every year. Uh, I follow it religiously on TV. I have the NBC Sports Package, which uh, a lot of people complain about, but I want my motocross and I want my Supercross. And, uh, but Supercross, in my opinion, uh, ruined motocross. It didn't ruin it, but it spoiled it. And it certainly ruined the 500 class, which I was a big fan of the 500 class. And in uh, 1993 was the last year for the 500 AMA Nationals. Soon after that, a Suzuki had already quit making open class bikes. And Honda, Kawasaki, and some of the KTM continue to make open class bikes and they still continue to make some big two strokes today. But uh, the Supercross was the death knell of the 500 class. And it was the death knell of American dominance in outdoor motocross as well. Uh, Supercross became the premier event for dirt bike racing. Uh, everything became focused on that, but uh, the next thing you know, all the money's going to Supercross. Uh, there were guys who didn't, I'm not going to say they didn't want to race Supercross, but it wasn't uh, as financially, it wasn't as lucrative as Supercross. And now, these days, uh, I was 
listening to an interview with Cooper Webb, who's the reigning Supercross champion, said that a, a, a Supercross championship is worth about a million dollars more than an outdoor motocross championship. And uh, I mean, that's the way it is. It's, can't do nothing about that. But it still annoys me because I love motocross. I love motocross. I like motocross more than I like supercross. I think it uh, separates the men from the boys. Supercross is about timing. You don't have to be in great shape to race supercross. The main events are 20 minutes on a groomed track. And some of the tracks, I'm, I'm not saying they're easy. Don't get me wrong. But outdoor motocross is 30 minutes plus two laps, two motos, and horrible heat. Supercross races are all done at night. They're all done during the winter and the spring, so it's not hot. And outdoor motocross is a lot rougher, a lot tougher, and it takes a completely different kind of mentality to do that. And a lot of people just don't have it anymore. You see these guys, they do great in Supercross, even some private privateers. Then they get on the motocross tracks, and they just don't have good results. Uh, and that started affecting the United States back Back in the 90s, started affecting the American motocross, the nation's teams. Uh, people started not wanting to go because they wanted to, didn't want to race again at the end of the season, and yada, yada, yada. And then it's gotten to a day where the end of the uh, outdoor season is only a few weeks away from the Monster Energy Cup, which is a, a lucrative supercross race in Las Vegas. And... Uh, Top guys are passing on going to the motocross to nation because they you get invited to it and they're saying no because they need to get ready for the Monster Energy Cup. I hate the Monster Energy Cup. I don't even I watch it because I'm a sick fan, but I, I don't like it. I wish it didn't exist. I wish it wasn't being used as an excuse for our top riders to not go to the motocross to nations. Uh, we've had Jeffrey Hurlings come to the United States and beat the shit out of us on our own tracks. And I'm not talking about, they, we've had the uh, motocross nations here a couple times where we've got beat. He just came over for a one-off race at the, I think it was at the Ironman two or three years ago, and he just spanked everybody. That's, that's where American motocross has gone. You got guys like Eli Tomac, I'm not going to dog Tomac. Uh, he went and he flew the colors over there three times for the American motocross team. But some of these other guys that, that piss and moan and don't want to go, it's really, really hard for me to respect someone that does not want to go represent the United States of America, the country that gave them the opportunity to do what they do and have everything they have. To not want to go represent them over money. I never had the talent to be a professional motocross racer, but if I did and they invited me to go to the motocross to nations, I don't care if I had to forfeit a hundred thousand bucks to do it, whatever. You know, if you win the Monster Energy Cup, it's a million dollars, but I still would have went to the nations and then tried my luck at the Monster Energy Cup. But I never, ever would have turned down an invite to the motocross to nations, motocross of nations, whatever the heck they call it now. But anyway, that's my take on where motocross has gone because of supercross. And I hope that uh, some of the top guys start taking the motocross the nation seriously again. And that we can get back there. It's not going to happen this year. I don't even know if they'll have the motocross the nation this year. Uh, I love motocross. I wish more guys were serious about it, our top guys, because I love the United States of America. And I love to see us dominate things. But we just haven't done that. In my opinion, it's all supercrosses. Fault. God bless Supercross. Can't wait till it starts. Can't wait to go to A2. I may even go to Dallas next year. we got a friend that moved to Dallas, so we got a place to stay. But uh, anyway, that's my take on it. Maybe I'm all wet. Leave, got any uh, comments? Leave in the comments below and let me know what you think. So like, share, and subscribe. And click on a bell if you want to be notified of future content. See you all later. See you at the races.